Hello guys, and welcome to another Couch Talks by Zero Fox Coffee and Games. We've got Zill, we've got Nerdfather CJ, and we've got a couple doggos running around here somewhere. Um, <laughs> and of course, the all-important coffee. Today we wanted to share a build with you called, um, well, the name of the character as, as Zill rolled them up is Fireaga Tyraga. So I'm sure you can see where this is going. Um, <laughs> anyway, Zill, how does this build work? So... I wanted to make a black mage, but I also wanted to make a gimmick build, so I made a build that focuses purely on optimizing the spell Firebolt. Um, so, if you are not familiar with black mage, it is a Final Fantasy class that focuses on elemental damage spells. Back from technical difficulties. <laughs> um, so, as far as the rule set, so you know whether you can play this. This is built for Pathfinder, the original Pathfinder. It adheres to Raw, and I tried to adhere to how the rules are intended, unless your DM doesn't do that, in which case I'm giving you some pointers. You can probably play this in Pathfinder Society groups, if they still do that. I th I'm, yeah, they're still a thing. Um, they're still a thing. They'd, yeah. Mostly they're trying to force Pathfinder 2 into all that stuff, but okay. I'm pretty sure Pathfinder 1E still has a society going. Fairly okay. certain. But I don't actually do Pathfinder Society, and I never have, so you should check that. I designed this as a cohort, so I took the Heroic Array, and I did not get any traits at level 1, but I did access traits via the additional traits feat. I used al alternate racial traits, an archetype, and I combined a hybrid class, which is Arcanist, with its base classes, which are Sorcerer and Wizard, which isn't technically disallowed, but your DM might feel a need to say something about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, common race, gnome, so you should be fine, and also this build is just kind of ridiculous in general, so run it by your DM, unless... They do these kinds of builds against you, and then just surprise them. Yeah. 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 No, we we have played for a couple of DMs that did bizarro builds like this, and so, you know, we're just the kind of people who, if you do that enough to us, we're going to come at you with really good builds that are built similarly. <laughs> yeah. But, anyway... So, overview, you are a gnome arcanist. Your arcanist level is the majority of your levels. That's your favorite class. That's what you're going to put most of your levels in. You're going to be a level 1 wizard and a level 1 cross-blooded sorcerer. Your bloodlines are red dragon and solar, but your other two options are orc and phoenix. Your arcane bond should probably be a bonded object that's a staff, because that way when you hit the level where you would be able to make a staff, you now have a staff you can craft on without having to spend any feats on that. Your school, of course, is evocation. Your alternate schools... Um, the elemental school of fire sounds like a really great option, and if you want more variety in the build, then one of the elemental schools is a good way to go. But you get more out of evocation. Your opposition schools are divination and illusion, because all I know is fireball, and it's all you need to see. Yep, <laughs> yep. Um, the, the, one of the big massive downsides of this build, though, if you do it in the order that we're proposing, is that you don't get, actually get Fireball until Arcanist level 6, which I believe makes you level 8? Yeah, so I, when I do this build, assume that you're gonna take Sorcerer and then Wizard, or Wizard and then Sorcerer, and then level Arcanist up for the rest of it. You can take them out of order, I don't think it really hurts you, it just kinda gives you some really cool numbers the first time you get Fireball. It's not optimal, but it's really cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, what you're going to be doing is you're stacking your Arcanist level of Wizard and Sorcerer for purpose of your school and your bloodlines. So your primary stat's going to be Intelligence. You'll benefit a little from Charisma because you're an Arcanist, so that gives you your points. And also some of the gnome stuff cares about your Charisma. And then Strength and Wisdom you don't care about at all. Except, I mean, strength affects your carrying capacity, which one of your options is flight, so it does play a little bit into there. Wisdom, you definitely don't care about. Just, you don't need to make a will save if you've already burned up Cthulhu. 
So, other thing is there are some ways to min-max this build more, but I sacrificed those because I wanted the flavor of the Black Mage. So I didn't take anything like Arcane Archer or Eldritch Knight. That probably would have given me a lot more. So, starting out the build. You are a gnome, and you're pretty much only going to take alternate racial traits. So you take Pyromaniac, which increases Fireball's cast level by one. I think it's all the spells with the fire descriptor, but, you know, just Fireball. Just for, That's what's important here. Just for fun, these don't really affect the build. But they're kind of fun. Um, I took Fey Magic and Bond to the Land, which give you favored terrain. And those out. give you. Oh, that's those the are, race. Yeah, race those are okay. still racial. And those are the uh, alternate racial traits? Or... Yes. Okay. Yeah, so those give you a favored terrain and then extra bonuses on that favored terrain. So we, of course, took the elemental plane of fire. Fey Thoughts gives Acrobatics and Sleight of Hand as class skills. These, this is another one that doesn't really affect the build that much, but it's kind of fun. You can do like a backflip while you cast a fireball or something. Um, <laughs> or if you wanted to do, there are certain meta magic builds where you're disguising your spells where Sleight of Hand is actually useful if you wanted to do something inspired by this that goes down that road. And then I took Academician, which gives you plus two on Knowledge Arcana. Which is actually quite helpful for any spellcaster. Your favorite class is Arcanist. Any of the bonuses are fine. HP is probably the best because you're kind of squishy. You're not putting a whole lot. Of, you're probably not putting a whole lot of points into Constitution because you want to max out your intelligence, which tends to eat up your point by if that's what you're doing. The other option is to take the racial one, which is you get a sixth of an arcane point, which could be useful. This build's not really relying on those, but they can be helpful. And then I won't be covering any of the skills because they just don't matter. Like, take Spellcraft and Knowledge Arcana, probably, but that's that's about it. Alright, so our first level is in Sorcerer? Yes. Right? So, we're gonna take cross blooded. This gives us two bloodlines, both of their Arcana. That's the important part. And then we just pick and choose the rest. Um, we're not getting any of the spells because we only get the bloodline powers from our Arcanus levels. But those are hurt pretty bad by this archetype if you're planning on doing Sorcerer later. Um, it also hurts our will save quite a bit. But like I said, we don't really care about staying alive because everything will die before it gets anywhere near us. So. I took Red Dragon and Solar because they're kind of each get plus one damage on spells with the Fire Descriptor. Which means... Oh, sorry. Plus one damage per die rolled. So you're starting out with plus two damage per die you roll. Which Fireball normally goes up to 10d6, so that's plus 20, which is a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> and then you have a couple alternates here. So we have the Orc Bloodline Arcana and the Phoenix Bloodline Arcana as alternates. That you could sub in and out for either one of these. The previous ones, right? Yeah, so the Orc Arcana is the same as the other two. Plus one, well, it's actually a little better. Plus one damage on all spells, but none of the bloodline abilities are really for spellcasters. So I did not choose that one. It is a little more viable if you want to create a character who goes outside the realm of just casting fireball. Yeah, so it's a little bit more viable if you, you know, for just if you, for your other damage spells. But it does, I think the bloodline itself, the abilities later down the track don't necessarily have the correct flavor right they also focus a lot like if if you wanted to do a sorcerer who wasn't a dragon disciple who was decent in melee or buff people in melee you would take orc okay it's mostly like bonuses to hit and stuff like that also goes well with ray attacks but i don't remember if it only affects melee hit chances yeah or not um, anyway. The one that really excites me is the Phoenix Bloodline, though. Yes. So, the Phoenix Bloodline is great if you want to turn this build into a healer. The Arcana lets you choose to heal with your fire spells, so now you just have a fireball that you can drop on your party in the middle of a fight. Watch all the enemies panic, because you just dropped a fireball on them. And then, yeah, your party's healed back to full. 
So your fellow players, if they don't haven't seen you use this ability before and you haven't told them, you're like, fireball at my feet! And everybody's like, what? <laughs> what? What? What, you, what are you doing that for? Why? Oh gosh. Um, so, I think that's pretty amazing. Um, so what's next, though? Um, so I took this first, like we said before, it doesn't really matter what order you take it. There's... I just like taking Sorcerer before Bloodline development, because then you don't have to recalculate anything for yeah. Bloodline development. And if you're going to change the order, Make sure you take Sorcerer before Wizard because you just get so much more out of it because you get those two Arcana. Yeah, and you get you get some innate abilities from the Sorcerer as well, I think. Uh, like like Ray Attacks and stuff, don't you? The ones? Ray Attacks are usually an Arcana. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, your first level Bloodline Power. Actually, all of your Bloodline Powers don't really affect your Fireball abilities, but your first level one is pretty much up to you. So, next level, we go into Wizard. The Evocation School... Is blurry. Um, allows you to increase fireball damage by half of your wizard levels. Because it's an evocation spell. The alternate choice, which seems obvious, is the elemental school of fire. It doesn't increase fire damage, it just gives you a bunch of really cool fire related abilities. However, they are not fireball. So I didn't want to use those because they're <laughs> the wrong spell. Um, evocation also has some useful other abilities later down the road. And the nice thing about Wizard is that Wizard and Arcanist share a spellbook. Yeah. So whatever spells you take as a wizard, you can <clears throat> prepare as an Arcanist. Yeah. Um, the Arcane Bond is also extremely good. Yeah. You, uh, you mentioned it before, obviously, but like the Arcane Bond is extremely good because it allows you to pick a magic item and then you can craft on that, ma on that item. Well, you pick an item that becomes your arcane bond item, and you can craft on that item without the feats. So it could be a ring, it could be a staff, it could be a wand, etc. Mm -hmm. Typically a staff is picked because it's just is the overall most versatile. Also, Black Mage has a staff. That yeah. was the real reason I took it. But it also gives you a nice boost at level, I think, yeah, 12. Yeah. I well, think when you get it. Because you can, uh, you can, you know, you can build a staff to imbue spells in and effectively increase your total spells per day. Mm -hmm. Um... One of the big reasons to do it. Yeah. Arcane Bond also lets you cast one spell spontaneously per day, and that spell does not have to be cast as a wizard. So you can cast another Fireball, despite being a level 1 wizard. Yeah. <laughs> Your opposed schools have no effect, because we only took one level of wizard, and those do only affect wizard as far as yep. I can tell. Yeah, as far as, I'm pretty sure Brought by Rod only references the wizard yeah. class when it's talking yeah. about it. So. The, um, the downside to choosing the Arcane Bond is that if you do lose your staff, it affects all of your spellcasting. So you have to make concentration checks for any spellcasting if you do somehow lose your staff. But why aren't they dead yet? Yeah, they right? You, so. you obviously haven't cast enough fireball. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Arcanus levels 1 through 5. We don't have fireball until Arcanus level 6 because we're on the Sorcerer's spell level track. So level 1, we're going to take the Bloodline Development Exploit, which... Would give us a bloodline ability, but since we already have one, we stack our Arcanus level with sorcerer levels. And don't you have to spend um, exploit or Arcanus points to activate the bloodline when you're an Arcanist? I don't think you do if you're stacking them. Okay, I'll have to. We'll, we may have to double check that and put it in the comments okay. as a as a fact check. But like, I'm pretty certain that you have it to just spend. Just says if you. It just says if you have levels in sorcerer, you're level. Stacks. Okay. Well, I, I would. I'm still. I think I might check that. Okay. I could be wrong, but still, it's it. This is super amazing because you can use effectively now stacking your Arcanus levels with your Sorcerer and your Wizard um, after you get to the next exploit, and uh, at worst, it comes at the cost of spending an Arcane point for doing it for. I think it's minutes per your intelligence modifier or something like that. From the, I, from the description of the powers, if I recall correctly, I'd have to look. We'll, we'll get back to it. But so why don't you uh, continue that? I'll, I'll look at that. Okay. So level three, you're going to take school understanding, which does the same thing for arcane level stacking with wizard for the purpose of your arcane school. Level five, we're going to take meta magic knowledge, which gives us a bonus feat. We will use this bonus feat to get Intensified Spell, which gives up to five additional dice on damage spells for a plus one spell level modifier. 
Um, as far as what spells we're gonna take, I took Mage Armor as a Sorcerer and Shield as a Wizard, or vice versa, so that you have those and they're not cutting into your... Okay, so there's... What are you doing, dog? There's, there's two different ways to interpret this. How I interpret it is, is you spend the Arcanist point to allow your Arcanist levels to stack with your um, Sorcerer levels or your Wizard level, but the... There, well, it, it is its own paragraph, but it also says if you take this exploit, just your Arcanist level stack. So. Yeah, it says, if the Arcanist already has a bloodline or gains one later, taking this exploit instead allows for Arcanist levels to stack with the levels of the class that grant her access to the bloodline when determining the powers and abilities of her bloodline. Yep. That, so. pretty, that pretty clearly states, if you took this exploit and you have a bloodline, your Arcanist levels stack. Okay. Period. Like, it doesn't say... Activating. If it said activating this exploit, then I would agree with That's that. That's fair. That's fair. But it just says taking it. Yeah. No, that, that seems reasonable. Okay. Alright, let's continue on. Um. Did you talk about the school understanding when I was looking that up? Yes. And I talked about metamagic knowledge. And school understanding works and, and is worded pretty much the exact same way as yeah. the bloodline development, so. Yeah. And yeah, so as far as spells to take, you've already got your defensive spells from Sorcerer and Wizard. I would just take. A mix of damaging spells. Fire benefits the most, but other damage types can technically be useful, I guess. Um, our feats. First level, we're taking spell, lo spell focus evocation as a prerequisite for some other stuff. Third level, we're taking spell specialization. This increases caster level by two for any spell, which is fireball. Technically, <laughs> you can change this every time you get a new tier of spells, so you can choose something else while you have this, and then just change it to fireball later. Um, level 5, we're going to take Mage's Tattoo, because it gives us a sick tattoo, and also it increases our caster level by 1 for, I think, all evocation spells, but I just wrote down Fireball, because that's what I care about. Level 7 is when we're taking additional traits. So, this would be Arcanist level 5, this character level 7. Our additional traits are Magical Knack, Arcanist, and Metamagic Master. Magical Knack... Gives us plus two on caster level, up to a caster level equal to a number of hit dice. Basically, that makes up for the two levels we took to multi class. Um, Meta Magic Master lets us cast one spell. We're choosing Fireball with Meta Magics more easily, so we reduce the modified spell level by one. The minimum being the original spell level, which was not technically an errata. For those of you with evil DMs, but was addressed in a QA. Um, What's that? I missed that for some reason. What, what, um... The minimum level of a spell when using Meta Magic Master is the original spell level. So you can't combine it with okay. something that d does like a plus zero, like the non lethal one, I think, just doesn't modify it. It has to be at least a level three spell still. Okay. And then, if you're already playing by with traits, you can either move your other feats up a level and just start taking them now, or there is a feat that I didn't want to take mostly because of the flavor called Bloat Mage Initiate, which would give you an extra plus one on your caster level. The drawbacks are pretty brutal, which I can get into later when we talk about some of the alternate stuff. <clears throat> your bloodline power at Arcanist level 2, for total arcana sorcerer level of three we have two options which are both pretty helpful if you think you're gonna reach level 21 then you should take friend of fire which is the solar option which will give you immunity to fire so if somebody runs up to you you can just nuke them without having to worry about yourself um friend of fire is also nice if you're being healed frequently and offers more fire resistance dragon resistances is better if you think you'll benefit more from the ac than the resistance so if your ac is low and you feel like having slightly more would help it gives you some natural armor or if you're planning to take power of arms which is the dragon bloodline option at level like combined level 20 then take Dragon Resistances because both Power of Arms and Friend of Fire will grant you fire immunity at that level. So, yeah, now we reach Arcanus level 6 and so we get to level 8. Fireball. 
So, yes, now we have the almighty powerful fireball up. Sneezy Noel, Sneezy Noel. Shh. Poor Poppy. Is she okay? She got too excited about fireballs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now that you have fireball, you just want to spend all of your third level and higher slots on fireball. Don't ever, like, think about what to prepare. Just prepare fireball. The nice thing is, and this is another reason we took our canist, we can actually prepare a fireball and spend all of our slots on fireball, but also have something else prepared in case something goes wrong with that somehow. Um, Which is obviously improbable. Yeah, but you know, just in case. Yeah. You can start preparing your metamagic fireballs in advance, which improves your action economy. So if you wanted to prepare like a fireball, an intensified fireball, fireball. I don't know why you would have a regular fireball, but you could prepare them that way. Um, as long as your party will protect you, if you just stand still and cast, it isn't strictly necessary. Yeah, which uh, if you can stand, just stand still and cast and be protected by your party, it does increase the value of Bloat Mage. Though, again, I'm, yeah. I also am not a huge fan of the particular flavor of Bloat Mage. I'd rather do that with, like, some kind of poison build yeah. or something. But That's true. <clears throat> it doesn't make a lot of sense here. Um, ninth level, we have two very different options. Breath Weapon and Cleansing Flame. I found breath weapon to be very lackluster. Yeah, I, I feel Unless like unless you have a high constitution, I feel like then it would be useful. But even then, I feel like Pathfinder really like there were some really OP breath breath weapon builds in three point five, and I feel like yeah. Pathfinder like as a knee jerk reaction just went through and nerfed all breath weapons yeah. for the players just super hard. Mostly, you can't improve the DC of it because it's not based on your spell DC. So, most of the time you're not dealing your full damage, is the problem I had with it. Um, the healing from Cleansing Flame helps you round out your character, but if your party has healers already, you probably don't need it, because it's not a lot. It's just, I think, it might be a d6, or like up to 6, or 1 per die or something, yeah. but you don't get a lot of healing out of it. But, it can be helpful. Um, our 15th level Arcanist plus Sorcerer options are also pretty different from each other. You have Wings and Healing Fire. If you took Bloat Mage Initiate, you almost definitely need to take the Wings option, provided that Bloat Mage Initiate didn't reduce your carrying capacity so much that you can't fly. This is because I, th I think it lowers your AC, but mostly it lowers your speed and you're already a gnome. And I couldn't find a chart, so depending on your DM, you have 10 or 15 feet of move speed. <laughs> you need to get away from everything by being in the air, because that's the only way you're going to be out of range of anybody trying to run up to you in melee. Healing Fire operates as cleric, um, cleric main ability. The channeling, kind of has her... At half your sorcerer level and deals fire damage to undead if you use it to damage them instead of causing it. Yeah, cool. yeah, you can also just use it to heal. So, it's a pretty solid option it's if your fun. party needs it. And is that from the Phoenix archetype or what, what is That's that? That's from the Solar. Okay. Yeah. And then, 20th level, I think Solar Ascension is more powerful than Power of Worms in general. You don't need Blindsight too much because you're not making hit attempts. Unless you just have a tendency to run into invisible enemies and we're as having opposed to, to concealed enemies. We're having to make these choices between these two powers because we have the hybrid bloodline, right? Yes. Okay. So normally you'd just be assigned one of these, but the hybrid bloodline, you choose one every time you would get it. Okay. So, um, Solar Ascension, becoming incorporeal is a nice survivability trick. CJ pointed out that, like, most things can hit you. Yes, that is true, but also, if they're not expecting it, it will buy you a turn. Um, and it might actually get you some sort of damage not damage reduction as in the term but it might reduce the damage you're taking depending yeah. on what they're equipped with our arcanist exploits from here on out at level seven arcanist i took arcane discovery creative destruction this is a little bonus to survivability that gives you some temporary hp every time you hit something with fireball dimensional slide i took at level nine it lets you five foot step and teleport. This does cost your points, your arcane pool, obviously, but it is very helpful. But maneuverability on the battlefield can't be understated, and dimensional yeah. slide is pretty much anywhere you can see you can teleport as long as it's within range. 
Yeah, so, it gets stronger as you level. Yep, yeah, and it's 10 so. feet per Arcanist level. And right now, if once you get to level 20 in this build, uh, from my understanding anyway, you're having 18 levels of Arcanist, right? Mm -hmm. So that's 180 feet of potential teleport range, which is really awesome. Even at level 8 um, or level 9 when you get it, that's still 70 feet of teleport range, which is further than most characters can walk any single movement easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, otherwise, or they have to spend their turn running up to you. So, at level 11, I took greater meta magic knowledge elemental spell. This lets us change the damage type of fireball so that your DM can't just throw fire elementals and salamanders at you for the rest of the campaign and totally make your build useless. This one is, I believe, a plus one level, which means if you don't use intensify, you can just cast it like as a level three spell if your dm only plays by raw then uh changing the spell's damage type as far as i can tell does not technically remove the fire descriptor from the spell as a dm i would say it changes it personally okay. that is kind of an interesting oversight i feel like pers yeah. personally but uh yeah so it yeah, doesn't so actually change the ice ball technically has the fire descriptor if your dm is unwilling to ever bend a rule for anyone yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i mean i guess you know you could flavor it that it's like flames of ice and it's okay because it's magic but i, I don't know it's just to me uh it's kind of one of those it might be in the small text so like, yeah you look that hard for it that, that's fair but you know put all the work on your dm if i like that so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh level 13 i took meta mixing this means that we no longer, we still benefit a little from preparing meta magic to our balls, but it matters less because instead of increasing the casting time, if we want to spontaneously apply meta magic, we can instead just spin an arcane point and cast it for the same amount of time. Super helpful because it gives you that move action back. Yep. If you don't really want it, you can swap it out for something else. Like? Or just put your level 15 ability on there, which is consume magic items. There's also so, a really great flame exploit that the Arcanist has. Um, I forget the exact name of it, but it deals 2d6 flame damage when you first get it, and it scales with your Arcanist level at 1d6 per every other Arcanist level. Okay. Which is pretty uh, a pretty awesome little flame spell. A lot of the attacks for the Arcanist like that are really good. Yeah. Um, I think the due to the I think it's Flame Lance. But anyway, um, name doesn't really super matter. It is definitely a great option to uh, include in, in this build since it is all flame flavored, mostly directed at Fireball, obviously. Yeah. But um, it's a fun little yeah. addition. I would probably, since it's not a spell, it doesn't benefit from the other stuff. So recommend getting like the Lightning or Ice version of that yeah. to round out your damage types. Yeah, the Sonic one's also really good. A little less damage, yeah. but. Um, not very many things are immune to Sonic or have resistance to Sonic, so... Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry. But yeah, level 15, I took Consume Magic Items. Because you can consume charges from a staff, which hopefully you have found the gold to upgrade your staff into something that has charges on it now. Yep. So you consume the charges on your staff, and that gives you arcane points back to use on your other stuff. Like teleporting away, or if you take the attack, attacking with your exploit. Uh-huh. Or, or just increasing your spell's difficulty by two or something. Yep. Yeah, which you can do at level 17 with potent magic whenever you increase save or um, spell resistance by one, you increase it by two instead. And at level 19, it took spell resistance, which you spend a point, and you get spell resistance that scales with your arcanist level. Starts to be worth it at higher levels. Pretty decent option. Our feats... From level 9 to 19? Yep. Our level 9, I took Empower Spell. Bonus, The bonus from Empower enhances all of the effects that rely on the number of dice, so we get more out of this than we normally would. Because, because... it times and halves the dice? Like one and a half? Yeah. 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 So if so you have 10 dice, you now have 15. Yes. And then it also says it just modifies anything else that adds dice. Cool. So, yeah. You get... 15 dice plus 30 plus three quarters of your wizard level or whatever. And then at level 11 we get heightened spell, so to put fireball in any spell slot. Yeah, this is actually kind of a weak option, but I just took it because, you know, that's really what this build wants is to fit well, fireball by, anywhere. By increasing the spell level though, you also increase the save. It's true. Um, so. Other mana magics don't do that. So, that is a good option. Level 13, 
I took Quicken Spell, because now you can cast Firebolt twice in a turn. Level 15, I took Persistent Spell, because we're trying to keep Fireball relevant. What this does is essentially it gives anybody making a reflex save disadvantage. If they succeed, they have to reroll. Um, level 17, I took Spell Penetration. And level 19, I took Greater Spell Penetration. And the spell Penetration. Because we're terribly desperate. So desperate to and keep Fireball relevant. And this build kind of failed like 10 levels ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but what, is, what does Spell Penetration do? It just increases the DC, right? It increases your check to overcome spell resistance. Okay. Well, that's still really good. Yeah. Like, it it's is... mostly, it's by, I think, two for each of them, which yeah. is just not that strong at level 17. Yeah. But it, it can make the difference, and you're going to be fighting bombs and extra planar creatures and stuff all the time at this point, probably, so it is relevant. Yeah, yeah. there might be other options that would be... Could be better at level 17 and 19, but uh, yeah. spell pen, if you're not sure, is I, I feel like a decent level of option just as yeah. a spellcaster in general. Um, yeah. But yeah, there might be some other ones out there that we did not stumble across. Equipment. I've never had both by level guidelines work out, especially when I've been DMing. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> what are you about? I'm always very happy with my work by my level. Okay, it definitely was not correct. Okay. I think it, so. I think they what they sure. did with the wealth by levels. They just kind of took the the theoretical amount and mm -hmm. took it to its logical conclusion. It, it sometimes works out and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, it really largely depends on your DM. Some DMs yeah. are a lot more um, willing to allow the players to you know really get in there and make some money somehow. Um, others are not. Yeah. But but yeah, just from my experience, the numbers are too low or you can't liquidize the wealth you do have. So you might have like 10k gold worth of stuff, but if you go to the vendor, you will have 2,000 gold. Because your bluff wasn't high enough? I don't know. Um, so I don't have an exact guideline, also because I designed this as a cohort. Uh, upgrading your staff is going to be your biggest power boost. Put as much into your staff as you can. Meta magic rods can be pretty useful if you want any meta magics that you don't already have. It's true. Meta magic with the rods. Rods are so good. Mm -hmm. So good. They can also just buy you back some feed economy if you get them early enough. Consume magic item lets you convert any wands you find that you don't want to use. Scrolls use your own stats. So if you cast a fireball off of a scroll, it gets all of your bonuses. Or if yeah. for some reason you had a scroll that wasn't fireball, you could use that too, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, why would you even keep that? Give it to somebody else. Yeah. Headbands. Increasing your intelligence increases the save DC against all of your spells, increasing your charisma improves your arcane pool, and depending on what, what exploits you took might improve some of those as well. And then survivability items, especially something to bolster your AC. Or even like a ring of, of uh, blink, or I mean, yes. there's so many survivability items that don't necessarily increase your AC. AC is just a good easy one, especially if you're just getting going. Yeah. Yeah. And just learning the game, uh, so focusing on getting your tiny AC increase is definitely a good way to go. But <clears throat> for mages, um, and particularly non ba classes that aren't based in AC, there's a lot of other good ways to go that I would mm -hmm. suggest looking into. Yeah. But this character is one who could be murdered by goblins because yeah. their AC is just that low. Yeah. So do at least get, like, bracers of armor or something. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, now I'm going to outline your fireball stats. Of course, we don't have fireball up to up through character level 7, because I assume we're taking wizard and sorcerer first. Then at level 8... Is the first because, beautiful numbers that yeah, we see. Because we can use intensified spell for free, our fireball damage is 13d6 plus 29. The save DC is 25, and we get plus 13 against spell resistance. Um, and I'm just gonna jump to level or jump up a couple levels here because we don't wanna. I don't wanna quote every single level personally. That's fair. Um, so let's jump to level fifteen. What are our numbers at level fifteen? So at level fifteen, we've seen our seen our damage start to plateau already. We're getting fifteen d six plus thirty seven. Our empowered spell, which we can do empower and int intensify, so we're gonna do that. Is gonna be twenty two d six plus fifty five. Save DC is thirty three where the enemies get disadvantage, and you will get plus 17. Yeah, so I would say that, that even though the damage is kind of plateaued, our, the, 
the amount of other bonuses you're getting on that is crazy, crazy good. Because even stacking disadvantage on that poor rogue, he may or may not have a group of agent depending on archetypes and stuff. Um, <clears throat> even if they, they they now have to roll twice, take the worst roll, and even though they probably have a good reflex save, the save DC is 33. I, even a well-built rogue is going to have trouble getting past that. Yeah. And then at level 21, we've capped out our levels for school. So it's going to be 15d6 plus 40, 22d6 plus 60 if we empower it. Save DC is 40 with disadvantage. And our attack versus spell resistance is plus 30 with advantage. Yeah. So, so basically, this is going to hurt stuff. Like, we've done a pretty decent job of making sure that we keep Fireball rele relevant despite the fact that it is only a third level spell, and we should really just be casting, like, Disintegrate at this point. <laughs> yeah. So, and also, like, the, uh, man, this is crazy. Um, so the only way you can get around it is that they have immunity fire, or, but even then you have elemental. Yeah, you have elemental spell, so you have the spell tiers to throw an elemental on top of the power. That's, that's pretty rad. So really, it's like the greater demons who have like immunity all the elements or something. Like that, yeah. Then, you, then you've got to figure out something. Then you're so. just yeah, you're just honestly you're just a support mage at that point. But anyway. Um, because <laughs> I took three classes. If you've made it to epic levels, then congratulations, your DM doesn't want you dead. Um. Yeah, basically. <laughs> So, you qualify for Dragon Disciple, which will give you Sorcerer Spells. Downside, you don't really get any new Bloodline benefits because you've already capped that. Um, but you do get free bonuses to your core attributes, which are pretty awesome, just no matter what level you are, yeah. if you like. So, I, I would probably pursue this option personally. Uh -huh. Another thing you can do, Dragon Disciple is clearly meant to be tied to a Spontaneous Caster. However, it only says to tie it to a spellcasting class, and that you must be able to spontaneously cast spells. It's true. It doesn't say those have to be the same class. So you could instead take Dragon Disciple much earlier and stack it on your Arcanus levels. And I've actually done a lot of research into this as, as far as like allowing Dragon Disciple to apply to Arcanus. The overall consensus it, after a lot of research is that no... Um, if you would to just take Arcanist, even though it is kind of a weird hybrid spontaneous caster, it does not allow you to take Dragon Disciple, even if you have like the blood Bloodline exploit and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, though, since you have a level in Sorcerer and stuff you like that... You actually have the Draconic Bloodline. Yeah, and you actually have the Draconic Bloodline. Um, by and, by Raw, yeah. I think you could actually tie it to yeah. Arcanist. And honestly, the I think... The main issue with just the Arcanist build is it says you have to be able to cast spells without preparing them. Yeah. Um... I, w I think there's a fairly good case in some instances to be able to um, tie it to Arcanus by itself, yeah. but by Ra and uh -huh. overall consensus on the internet is that it's not possible, yeah. which I also kind of agree with. Yeah, no, that seems fair. It also would slow down your spell track because you're not leveling your Arcanus spell track every time you level up, and then it's not an Arcanus level, so it doesn't stack. Like, it stacks with your bloodline because it's Dragon Disciple, but it doesn't stack with your wizard level. Yeah. And honestly, even if your DM was like, no, Dragon Disciple can only level Sorcerer, you're going to get, you can you can increase your Sorcerer caster level and just learn innate yeah. utility spells. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, I mean, who cares if the caster level is so low because you're just giving, you know, the Paladin more charisma or yourself or, right. you know, whatever. Yeah. So. The downside to doing that is also because we took Cross-Blooded, we get one less spell per level. Yeah. Which can really hurt you. Yeah, but I mean, but we're already at epic levels, yeah, so... Yeah, you're already there. Like, there's there's nothing to lose at this point. Um, if you really love the Fireball gimmick, you can just level Wizard to get more spell slots, and then when you hit 5th level Wizard, you get 3rd level spells on Wizard, and you can do the whole thing over again! Yep. <laughs> um, if you want to dip a few levels into Rogue, I think it's 3 levels, or 1... Or two levels with a feat that gives you bonus on sneak attack. Yeah. Then you can qualify for arcane trickster. Which Ray is spells fun. like disintegration qualify for range sneak attacks as long as you meet all the requirements. Yeah. So this is fun. This is I love the arcane trickster. Um, you can the easiest way to do this uh, obviously in this build is two levels with the feat that increases your sneak attack. And that way by the third level, so by level twenty four in this instance. If you went to uh, level 21, going with just Arcanist, um, you could have some crazy sneak attack abilities with like Disintegrating Ray, or even, you know, whatever. Just any of those range touch attacks. So, mm -hmm. um, If you redo 
some of your feats, you'll eventually qualify for Arcane Archer. The only real limiting factor besides your feats is your base attack bonus. Yeah. Because you're definitely going to get the spell casting that's required. Um, I think you can technically launch Fireball. Yeah, I no, think I think... you can launch AoE spells. Yeah, so, I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, if you were really, really optimizing this build, Arcane Archer would have been in there. But Black Mage doesn't have a foe, so I didn't use it. Um, if you dip a level into Fighter or Aristocrat, because you just need proficiency with all martial weapons, you can take Eldritch Knight. If you took one of the Bloodline abilities that grants you fire immunity, then you can hit with your sword and then drop a fireball on yourself. Um, you, may least expect it. <laughs> you will have to take the feat Arcane Weapon, um, so that is important. It is a feat that allows the Eldritch Knight to do that kind of thing. Um, oh, I was saying about. There's a class feature where it's not the same hit, but if you crit... Oh yeah, no, at, at, at the um, level 10 uh, ability for the um, Eldritch Knight, when, yes. when you crit, you can free cast any spell. Yeah, but Arcane Weapon is also a great option. Arcane Weapon you can qualify for in the Eldritch Knight track by level 2, I believe. Um, it's a great option. A lot of people go into Eldritch Knight thinking they're going to be able to kind of mimic the Magus without necessarily picking the Magus, or it was actually the original Magus build, and it was, but they never actually gave it the class feature to be able to cast spells through your weapon. Um, that is a feat that will... The prereq is you have to basically be on Eldritch Knight. There's no other way to get it. So, yeah, um, it's basically a class feature that you have to spend a feat on. Yeah, and if you want to just pick up a whole new class, because why not at this point, yep. you can just go Magus. Yep. And then you can... Spell combat, which works with fireball. You can't cast fireball through your sword because it's not a touch spell. There are um, but, mages exploits that will, yeah. will allow you to do that eventually. Yeah, but it's not just a default ability. You yeah. have to go get that. Um, still a great option. Or honestly, if you just really wanted to get weird and, and level something completely unrelated, uh -huh. uh, that'd be okay too. It's, yeah, it's, it's epic levels, like whatever. Go level monk. <laughs> yeah, no monk or paladin for our yeah. Like, you're probably not a paladin because your whole build is related to burning things down, and your character probably just has a personality that doesn't mesh very well with monk or paladin. It's true. But, <laughs> but... in summary, you will die. <laughs> you will die, and you will be burnt down by yourself, and it's going to be great. If you want to optimize, then you should probably just choose a completely different build that focuses on something other than fireball. Unless you really want to optimize Fireball. Um, mostly because a really good rogue is going to avoid all of your damage. And most DMs, like, even a good DM is going to see, Oh, this build has this weakness, I'm going to throw this at you. Because that makes it challenging. Yeah. Your whole game can't just be handed to you. They're going to figure out what the build's weaknesses are, and it has a lot. I mean, that being said, though, those saves that were pumped out, even on relatively basic, yeah. relatively basic uh, attribute core stats... Were pretty gnarly. Forty yeah. save, forty at level twenty one, so thirty nine at level right. twenty. It was like it was like thirty three yeah, at level fifteen. Like the higher level you start, the more survivable this build is. Yeah, because it has more tricks to keep its spells relevant when something does get thrown at you, and it has a few survivability tricks around you around. So like at I... level twenty plus, rogues probably not gonna make it out of your fireball unless they focus down on their reflex saves, which they can totally do, but is it gonna be like the average rogue you encounter? But, it, like, especially if you play this before level 8, you should probably expect to be useless until you hit level 8. <laughs> yeah, so I would say the challenging levels of this build, especially if you do it how we've summarized here, are gonna be level 1 to, one to 7, and then once you get to 8, you become, you come into your own. Um, not to say you're useless in those levels, you just, it doesn't necessarily feel how you want it to feel. Yeah. Um, also, multi-classing spellcasters back-to-back -back makes you feel really weak. It does. Except for your will save. Your will save, despite the fact that you got a minus two for using it for taking cross-blooded, and another minus two for making my wisdom score, I think I made that eight. Um, you still have a really good wisdom save. It's still plus two at level three, yeah. because you got three caster saves. Wow. Um... <laughs> Then I would say, but just based on what I've seen here, it looks like there's another area where it gets gets kind of um, sloggy between like level like 10 and 13, 14 yeah. range. Yeah, your single fireball damage plateaus at level 11. Yeah. Level 10 is, I think, the last time it increases because you get it at 13 d6. And then 
Yeah, level 9 you have 14, level 10 you have 15, and that's the max you can go. There's, like, unless you're doing Mythic, and then take Mythic Fireball. Yeah. Which is a whole other thing. Which, that just increases the, <laughs> d the uh, die size, actually, to D10. Yeah. But, anyway, the, uh, so, yeah, I would say the next area where you will have a bit of a slog, and it won't feel super good, is going to be from, like, level 10 to, like, level 13-ish, until you get the, that next quirk in your ability to change it up a little bit. Uh, make it more difficult for those rogues to avoid your damage. Um, mm -hmm. Again, that being said, though, this build is very viable, very fun looking, yeah. I have to say. And then there are a lot of things where we have to take one thing because that's just like the best thing to get more fireball damage. But your bloodline abilities generally don't affect that at all. So just, you know, take whichever one you want, really. And same with the feats past level 15 are really kind of the take what you want. Although some of them are definitely much stronger than some of the yeah. options. Same with a lot of the um, arcane exploits. You just kind of take whatever you think is cool, because most of them are just in there to kind of round out the character. So if there's something else you'd rather take, then take it. Yep. Cool. Well, I think that's all we have for you guys on this build. Let's see, is there another? Yep. Nope. Our slide is done. Um... Fireball! <laughs>